We're back with Eric Eeks, Director of Fine Arts for College Station ISD. And in this segment, we're going to talk about your first year of teaching at a new position. So you just got hired. Um, and this is this is a critical year because uh, in Texas, at least, they don't have to renew your contract if after a year if they don't like you. You don't you don't get that tenure mm -hmm. thing. So you're not quite you don't get all the full TEA tenureship type stuff. Um, so let's just get into it. So during your first year, I guess, um, or, or just for any teacher, like what expectations do you have for your fine arts staff? Like what do you expect them to be able to do? Um, do they have to be able to stand on their own two feet and take care of business? Can they ask for help? Like what, you know, just generally, what are you looking for, especially like in a newer teacher? Yeah. Well, so we absolutely would be looking for somebody that is able to stand on their own, to be able to stand on the, on their own two feet. But also we would want and, and expect them to be able to, to know how to ask questions, to know how to seek out the resources that you have in your own district. So, so, I, so I, I guess, yes, we want them to be able to, you know, to be solid and to have a great foundation, but they need to also know, yes, I need to ask a question about this or, or know exactly who to go to uh, for help because, because they're going to need it. You know, you're not going to be able to see everything and you're not going to be able to anticipate every little single thing. Yeah, so, yeah, I imagine you don't have the time to hold somebody's hand and yeah. be in their classroom all the time. And, right. You know, um, but you could probably if they say, gosh, you know, I'm having a really tough time with with this. Can you help me? Do you have any advice yeah. for me? You probably that's probably more your role. Absolutely. Okay. Right. Right. And if it's something that that maybe perhaps I couldn't specifically help out with, we would definitely point, in, you know, that that teacher in the right direction as far as where to get that help or, hey, contact so and so. What are some common issues that you see with newer teachers? Like what are the common struggles that new teachers have that you see and what do you do to kind of step in and, and kind of get them back on the right track? Yeah, so probably probably common things that we might see either either with a new teacher or or a new teacher director that is new to a specific job is sometimes people try to do a little bit too much too fast, you know. So so my advice for sure would be know the program as best as you can, know the history, know know the kinds of things that that have been done. Now now sure you're you're going to want to grow the program, you're going to want to to build capacity and expand on that, that's perfectly fine. But you know, everything needs to be done probably in small logical steps because that first year, it's really important to be able to to have the understanding and the support and the backing from the students, from the parents, and from your own you know fellow teachers and uh, administration too. Just oftentimes people try to come in and, and they try to just change way too much too fast. And, you know, and, and, and everything needs to be done carefully. Everything needs to be done logically. Um, you know, also, if, if you're trying to change too much, you know, in your first year, you may miss out on opportunities to, to really understand perhaps why it was done like that because, you, because you're just simply moving too fast. So let's go back, like, let's say you're getting ready for your first concert, your fall concert or, or whatever mm -hmm. you're doing. Maybe if, if it's a beginner concert, your, your Christmas concert, right? Or holiday concert, whatever is mm -hmm. politically correct to say in, in this format. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, so you probably don't want to over-program too hard. Would you lean more towards like fun or pops music type stuff or serious like what do you like that first program that first concert program that you're designing and you're working with the kids how do you how should you approach that if you're new to a district or if you're new teaching yeah sure well i would try to reach out uh to people that are perhaps also in your district too they can give you a pretty good insight and, and a pretty good knowledge base on perhaps what has been done in the past as far as the types of concert that has been that, that, that that's been performed maybe the the lit that that is on that try to just gain as much prior knowledge as you can for that very first concert uh, the second thing you know I would do is really strike that balance of performing quality music but also per performing music that's going to be engaging for the students this is probably going to be your first opportunity to really try to hook the kids and to try to get get them you know on your side and and moving along with you and I I, I I think if you're able to strike a good balance between quality lit and and a great fun experience 
for those students, that is a home run right there. Okay. That, yeah, that's always the, the winning strategy. That's It's tough, though, because mm-hmm. you don't know who you've got necessarily. Mm-hmm. Like, you're just kind of feeling it out. And mm-hmm. um, if, if you're just like, all right, kids, uh, let's get out the Mahler Adagiato or something like that, like, yeah. that could be a disaster. Yeah. Uh, but on the other hand, like, if you're playing three blind mice or whatever, they're probably going to get turned off real fast, too. Right, right. You, you, just, you just have to find that balance, and that's certainly easier said than done. Um, but, you know, use, as, use as, as, as many and as much of your resources as, as you possibly can to try to get a good grasp on what's occurred there in the past. Uh, you, you know, maybe, you know, you could even do something as, 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 as fun and as, and as casual as doing some sort of a student survey, like, Hey, what kinds of music do y'all like? You know, mm. what are you interested in? Yeah. Um, Cause you, you just have to find that balance of, of, of performing something that, that is quality that, that will definitely meet the instructional needs of the students too, but the students have to enjoy what they're playing. Try to figure out what the group's done in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, talk to other directors in the district and mm-hmm. kind of figure out mm-hmm. what, you know, what the level is. Talk to the students and see what mm-hmm. they're interested in doing. Mm-hmm. Um, anything else? Maybe just like spend the first few weeks just reading sure. pieces. Yeah. Well, sure, sure. Because you're going to need to assess what level your students are at really before you can really do a whole lot of uh, deep diving into, you know, what kind of music to play. You've, you've got to figure out... You, you know, where the kids are and what they're going to be successful at too. So okay. yeah, I would probably definitely try to read, uh, read as much as you can before, you know, before trying to narrow in on, I'm going to do this piece and this piece and this piece, you know, because you. you have to know where they are. Yeah. And, but then like, again, don't try to do anything off the wall, like try to yeah. make it, the students should have a familiar sense mm-hmm. of, Oh, this is what an orchestra class is like. And it, For sure. it should feel familiar to them and then make those changes gradually or maybe mm-hmm. not at all if you feel like well this district or you know this demographic just you know they they they're not into this or, or, stuff that i used to do for a different school district right right i i, I think that small changes uh and and cautious changes are are completely important and very um appropriate you know and it's it's going to be very very likely that that the vision that you had, let's say at the very beginning of the school year, like let's say the night before your first day of school, that vision over the course of the first couple of months, even into the first year is probably going to change because your knowledge of, of the situation in the program has changed too. So, so be open to, uh, adaptability for sure. As far as, as far as, um, vision and and direction and, and things that you feel, that are appropriate and maybe perhaps now not appropriate. Just, just, just be open and adaptable because it's going to change over the course of the year, just simply because you've been there. Right. So as, as I addressed earlier in the video, like your first year is kind of critical as far as uh, being able to keep your job. Um, What are some things that you could mess up on that would absolutely not get you rehired for the next year? Right. So, so things that can be kind of a deal breaker for the second year, uh, if you've had any sort of a financial issue, you know, like let's say that there's been a, been some sort of a mistake or something like that, you know, um, with fundraising or, or anything like that, you know, just really, really keep a good handle and a good reign on all of your finances, whether it comes from uh, fundraising or maybe it's uh, district finances. Just be very, very careful. Be very, very trans- transparent. Follow all of the uh, laid out district guidelines when it comes to handling money. Um, that's probably your big one for sure. Uh, so the second thing uh, w- would be any sort of an incident, uh, perhaps, you know, with one of the students, you know, in your classes. Um, just make sure that you are always trying to follow district policy, you know, when it comes to, to handling any sort of a discipline issue. Be very open, be very transparent, take lots of notes, um, and, 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 and just make sure that you are following, you know, all of the codes of conduct, because that's, that's also something that can, that can get people in, into some Hardship, for sure. The kind of like professional conduct, right? Mm-hmm. So like right. the language you use in your classroom, right. your attire. Sure. Um, you know, if you show up to work and it looks like you just got out of bed. Sure. You know, that's not a good move. Sure. And, and then just your interactions with your students, you know. And there will be times where, you know, where you have an interaction, you know, with a student that, that maybe is less than positive. But, but just be very careful about how, 
how you handle that and also know that you are the adult, you are the role model, you are the educator, you're the one that is setting the standard. Just just, just be very cognizant of, of all of those kinds of interactions because we as educators, we have to deal with that probably on a daily basis. With the financial stuff, I guess, to so that you don't fall into those traps like ask your bookkeeper questions. Mm-hmm. You know, if you have a fine arts secretary, ask them questions about you're like, hey, do you know? Do I have money? You know, whatever. Can I see my balance sheet or whatever, mm-hmm. just to make sure stuff's lining up? Um, if you don't know the a policy, mm-hmm. try to figure it out. Yeah, just just ask 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 lots of questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask clarifying or maybe follow up questions uh, be, because it because you, you know it's it's important that you are handling everything correctly. It's also important that. Uh, that that you are showing you know good due diligence especially with with how you're handling funds so don't so don't be afraid to ask questions if there is a discrepancy or if there was a mistake made mm-hmm. what's the best way to handle that for sure report it as soon as you can uh, because th- things like that can happen but just be as open and as transparent as you can possibly be that would be my probably most important uh, advice or thought on that 